We've talking a lot about slavery and power and how those two ideas fit together. So we've been talking about how people got Africans out of Africa, how they put them on the ships and brought them across the ocean, and then what happened to them once they got here and they were forced to be slaves. But I want to look back a little bit and figure out how did it get to that point because that wasn't always, we learned that wasn't always what was done. So how do we get to the point where that's kind of considered okay to do or that that's something that they even start doing in the colonies? So we're going to take a look at that here. We're going to read a little bit together. In the South, the land and weather was different. Plantation owners who lived in the southern colonies grew tobacco to export to Europe. They needed many workers to run these plantations. At first, plantation owners began paying for indentured servants. Okay, so here's this word here, indentured servants. We talked about that before when we were talking about Virginia. So paying for indentured servants to come to colonies from Europe to work on their plantations. The servants agreed to work for a certain number of years. At the end of that time, they were given their freedom. Okay, so they brought them over to work, and we talked about that when we talked about Virginia. They couldn't afford to come over on their own, so the masters would pay for them to come over. They would have to work for them for a certain number of years, and after that time, they were to be free. <clears throat> so let's see if we can figure out why that didn't continue. Workers could be brought, workers could be brought from the home, England, but didn't work out very well. It was hard to keep the workers alive. Okay, this is kind of a problem here, so we're going to talk about this. The hot weather, high humidity, and swampy water gave disease to many people. Even indentured servants who got used to the climate did not live very long. The work was hard and the conditions were very bad. Many servants did not survive long enough to finish their contracts. It was necessary for plantation owners to keep paying for servants to cross the ocean. So basically, the servants didn't last long enough to become free because of the conditions there. And it really wasn't just the servants who were dying. Definitely um, upper class people, the, the, it was very hard and very bad there at first, but the upper class people had a much better chance of survival um, than the lower classes did. So even with all these problems, so even with all these problems, when the plantations first got started, the owners were glad to pay for indentured servants instead of enslaved people. Very interesting. So we got to ask ourselves, well, what on earth changed? Okay. In time, the use of indentured servants became less attractive to the plantation owners. So we're going to have to ask ourselves now why. They were glad to do it at first, but why did it change? When the plantations began to move away from the coast, disease was not a big problem. Servants were living longer. They ate better and could avoid bad drinking water. Healthy servants stayed living long enough to complete their contracts. Plantation owners started having to pay the servants their freedom dues. So it doesn't come right out and say it, but it tells us here in time the use of indentured servants became less attractive. So they didn't like it as much. And then it tells us these facts afterwards. So the author is letting us know that these facts are the reasons that using indentured servants became less attractive. Servants were living longer, they finished their contracts, and they had to pay them. So because indentured servitude only went for a certain amount of time, once the servants stopped dying so quickly, they would have to pay them by the time they got to the end of their servitude and give them land or money or whatever it was that they needed for payment. It says, freedom dues were what a servant received for completing his or her contract. According to the contract, an indentured servant was given food, clothing, money, and some livestock. Those who were given land, so they're also given land, could finish their contracts and start farming next door. Now, this is interesting. They don't quite say what that means, but let's think about it. They could start farming next door, right next to the person who used to have them working on their property. So what ended up happening is that these indentured servants, when they were living longer, they became competition. Not very big competition, and trust me, a lot of these indentured servants who got a little bit of land did not do very well um, compared to the plantation owners around them. But they, had, they were getting land, so the more indentured servants who survived, the more land had to be given away to these indentured servants, and the more competition there was for these larger plantation owners. Before long, buying an enslaved workforce from Africa became more profitable which means it allows them to make more money. 
So if it became more profitable, that means it wasn't profitable at first to bring in um, a large enslaved workforce. Or, so it was just as easy to take indentured servants. But after they started living longer and they had to pay them like they were supposed to when they finished their contract, then all of a sudden it did not become better for them to hire indentured servants. Um, so before long, buying an enslaved Af workforce from Africa became more profitable and efficient than hiring indentured servants. Slavery spread in the 1700s. Millions of anchors were, were planted with tobacco. Planters also introduced a new cash crop, rice, which needed lots of labor to plant and harvest. In the late 1700s and 1800s, cotton became a third cash crop grown in the American South. Indigo and cotton growing relied on the labor of enslaved people. So lots of work to do. You need to bring in lots of people to do that work. And if you bring in indentured servants and they survive at the end, you have to pay them and potentially give them land and then bring in more and keep doing the same thing. So that's not going to work for these plantation owners who are using huge amounts of land to grow huge amounts of crops. So they turn to a different source of enslaved labor who they don't have to free in a certain amount of years and they don't have to give them land and they don't have to pay them.